Year 4, Nicole Kozoff. Well, hello, you bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to Nicole Kozoff, I Shall El de Sathgeshad Rosh. Skull Horror, the frigid South Nightmare Fortress of Death. And as you just saw, it is now year four. Yes, believe it or not, we've been here for four entire years. And the fortress has not yet crumbled. We must be doing something, right? Now then, let's uh, zoom it in here a little bit. Yes, things are going rather well. You can see how the dwarves are very busy, and most of them are managing to keep it together at least somewhat. Even those angry dwarves that we saw before, which really is something. I've noticed a couple of them actually turning around too, which is just excellent. Kolovi, for one. That nasty poet that threw a tantrum last episode? She's completely stress-free right now. And in fact, she's been promoted to broker. Yeah, you know what? I like the cut of her jib. Quite a dwarf, I'll tell ya. Uh, and you may actually notice right here that she is carrying a chunk of gold up to the north. Up towards that shaft that we we're going to use to get gold down to the smelters very quickly. Yeah, it's now all carved out and working swimmingly. In fact, almost all the gold nuggets that were up here are now thrown down to the magma smelter layer. And just having a brief look down below, you can see all the smelters and a magma forge are now in place. And so now gold production is in full swing. Let's see, are there any other bits of good news? Ah yes, of course there are. Our food and drink stocks have stabilized for the most part. We have a lot more drinks than food, and we are trying to get a balance going. Still the variety is kind of lacking, but yeah, we're working on that. Mostly just waiting for these pigs to start breeding a bit quicker. Don't want to start butchering them too soon. Here's something else a bit interesting. We're looking down underneath the meeting hall right now, where you can see our new well. All filled up with water, it just filled up actually. It's fed from the aquifer, and is two Z levels deep. And back up here, you can see that there are four wells up on this level. Two in the meeting hall, and two in our hospital, which we also just got finished. In fact, speaking of our hospital, and zooming in a bit, you can see Rack Hust, our expedition leader, in this hospital bed right here. Recently, she just got the crap beaten out of her by an angry dwarf. I did say most of the dwarves were pretty cool lately. Not all of them. And in fact, a dwarf had approached her and just started wailing on her. It wasn't so bad at first, but then they just kind of stood over her and intermittently kept beating her. It was, uh, pretty bad. But the dwarf that caused this really got what's coming to him. They got beaten by Bomrek, who is now our sheriff. Pretty severely, too. And so they had to be brought to the hospital as well. And actually, they were in beds right next to each other, which must have been kind of awkward. But... We didn't have enough water, so we could not give them anything to drink, and so we had to really hurry to get that well finished quickly. And we did, just in time. Well, in time to save Rakust anyways. The other dwarf ended up dehydrating. And remember, since we're in a zombie biome, the dwarf that died right next to Rakust could come back as a zombie, but luckily it did not. And that body was put in our tomb, up this way here, the door of which is now locked. Because as you can see, that dwarf did come back and is now a zombie, just kind of wandering through the tomb. Kind of ghastly, right? Probably gonna put some traps up and try to catch the thing in a cage, but we're not in any huge rush on that. Right now we're trying to get Rackhust back up on her feet, although I'm pretty sure she lost her ability to stand. Things might be pretty rough for her now, and so I'm actually thinking about replacing her as our expedition leader. Kind of a shame, but it's a rough life out here, and we can't have a weak leader. It just wouldn't do. Uh, something else we did in this past year. Yeah, it has been a busy year. Uh, we made a mist generator for our meeting hall, which isn't exactly completed just yet, but it's getting there. If you have a look right here in the middle of the meeting hall, there's kind of a, like a ring-shaped channel in the floor. And up above that, in the ceiling, we dug a hole out, kind of like that one that's above our farm area. And it taps into the aquifer above and is controlled by a flooding gate that is all linked up so we can open and close it at will. Now when it does open, that water will come down here, splash onto the middle of this ring-shaped channel, and then hopefully down here, where it will drain out into this tunnel over here. And that is linked up to the third cavern layer, far, far beneath the surface of the world. Oh, and I will mention too that somebody else made an artifact. It's a green glass grate, an unbreakable grate, mind you, that we put right here, just so no beasties can get up through this tunnel and into the fortress. Better safe than sorry. Oh, uh, just looking down this way here, it looks like one of the, uh, boar skins came back to life. We were doing some butchering and could not quite tan that skin in time. Uh, but no problem, somebody killed the thing. Pretty gross. But in good news, just up this way, somebody gave birth to a boy. That is nice. So now we have two babies in the fortress. A little girl was first, and was born earlier in the year. 
Right now we are up to 45 dwarves. We were at 44 at the end of last episode. Then that one dwarf died, turned into a zombie, and we had two babies born. So yeah, 45. And we've had no further migrant waves, even though I was planning on turning them away if we did. I do like our small community here. I like to know my dwarves. Hustle and bustle? No thanks. I think we're getting to the end of this past year's news, but I would like to mention that our farm area over here I don't think is going to cut it for much longer. I had intended to only have a tiny farm because I was expecting to have like five dwarves, so I think we're going to need a bigger farm. Mostly because we need a ton of pigtails for both clothing and for paper making. Because remember, we still do want to have a fortress of scholars out here in this fetid tundra. And so yeah, we're going to have to think about doing that at some point. And I suppose while we're on the subject of muddied floors, that's what all this red is right here. Mud. Just a coating of it from when we uh, drained out the farm area before. Not too sure why it's red like this, but I guess it's just the color of the soil. Just figured I'd point it out so you didn't think it was like a bloodbath or something. Now it's just mud, I guess. Anywho, moving on. Damn it, looks like we have another boar skin slopping through the halls down here. That's pretty gross if you think about it. Just the skin of a boar, all the sparse little scraggly hair is still attached. And again, it does have malicious intent. Like it has no ability to, but it does want to kill our dwarves. But I mean, easy enough to deal with really. Mm, easy enough, I said. I mean, this farmer here, did kill the thing, but now he's like freaking out and crying and stuff. I don't blame him. It's, it is terrifying. <laughs> Look at that. This other farmer just grabbed the nasty old zombified skin and is now tanning it. That is nice. Quickly now. Don't let it come back. Looking back over this way towards our meeting hall, looks like all of our golden floor grates are in place. And so now I'm going to turn on the mist generator. And here we go. And voila, fantastic. Isn't that nice, dwarves? I'm really trying to get these dwarves as happy as possible. Working on it, working on it. Still gotta get some of that infrastructure in place. Like we still don't have a temple, which is terrible. It's not good, but not a huge deal. Now that we do have water, a fairly stable source of food and drinks, a hospital, all that important stuff, it shouldn't be a biggie just to bang out a couple of those other things. In fact, I think that's what I'm going to do right now. Or rather, after I get some boring things out of the way first. Gotta make the farm a little bit bigger, and we still need some additional storage space as well. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna get that all squared away, and then we'll start working on the interesting stuff. Just one moment. Year 5 Yes, yet another year has passed, and we are now in our fifth year. Things are speeding right along. And before I zoom in, would you take a look at this fortress? That is a damn fine fortress, if I do say so myself. Small, but highly respectable. Let's get in there. Well, the first thing you might notice is that this past year we carved all the gold and gems out of the fortress walls and replaced it with stone because we had a ton of stone all over the place and we did actually manage to smell all the gold ore that we had available. So I figured instead of making a new mine we should just carve out the stuff that's available to us and beautify Skull Horror while we're at it. Turned out pretty well. Down here you can take a look at these five rooms. These are the five rooms that belong to our five starting dwarves. And they each now have two windows. Gemstone windows made of praise. I thought that'd be a nice touch. We do have a ton of this stuff here, so yeah. We did manage to clean up all that mud. And so we don't have to worry about filthy dwarves anymore. Over here you can see our farm plot area. And we do now have four enormous farm plots. It is currently fall pigtail season and we are harvesting a lot of those. This field here is starting to come up. The top one should be next and the dwarves are just now seeding the southern plot. Soon we're going to have a ton of paper. We do already have a lot of cloth and we are making clothing over here. Socks, trousers, shirts, hoods, and shoes made of pig leather, of course. Over here we could see Rackhust, our expedition leader, who's surprisingly doing very well. Yeah, she popped up out of her hospital bed and got right back to work. No problem whatsoever. I did think briefly that we'd have to replace her, but that does not seem to be the case at all. No, she is a strong leader after all. Glad to see it, really. This past year, we did have a minor incident, a couple of tantruming dwarves, never a good thing, but they were thrown in our prison. And one of them shortly after went berserk. And so we had to lock the door and they eventually died. We caught them in a cage trap and now they're up here in our stockpile. A damn shame. Even more shameful though is that dwarf had a baby they were carrying. And luckily they put it down right before they were locked up. 
But now the baby's just kind of crawling around the fortress. Its father is still around, but apparently he doesn't want to take care of the thing. And so it's kind of just like the fortress's baby right now, I guess. Someone must be taking care of it, it still hasn't died. It's still kind of a shame though. Like, obviously. And one other bit of bad news before we continue. This past year we had to lock up the caverns because there was reports of a forgotten beast somewhere out there. And I have reason to believe it is still out there, somewhere. But luckily it can't get in through this tunnel, or through our well. The only thing I am concerned about is if a forgotten beast comes up through our magma forges. A distinct and terrifying possibility. Each one of these workshops is connected up to the magma through this tunnel underneath. And although you can't see it, there is a fortification in this tunnel, though I don't think that's going to do very much if a Forgotten Beast does want to get through. That is the one big thing I'm concerned about. If that does happen, then, well, things are going to get a little hectic very quickly too, but no matter. We're crossing bridges as we get to them here. Anywho, now we get to move on to some of the fun constructions, finally. First and foremost, I would like a temple. And I'm not going to worry about making temples to every single god, we're just going to have one temple. I don't think it makes that much of a difference anyways. And you know, I'm thinking there's so much going on on this level right here, that we should probably build our scholars library and the temples and all that stuff down below somewhere. And I'm thinking we could do it right below this little main hub area right here. Might be nice. We'll take it down a few levels to about right here. Where you can see I've already planned up four enormous chambers. I'm kind of thinking on the move right here. One of these is going to be a temple, and another will be a library. And yet another is going to be a barracks, an enormous barracks. And the fourth will be a tavern for our dwarves. Dwarves have many needs, and some of them don't even know what the hell they want half the time. And so I'm thinking, well, maybe we can just have all the dwarves be like, scholars and then at some point just take them off scholar duty and have them train in the barracks for a bit and then we can also have some downtime where they go to the tavern or the temple for that matter might be nice and we'll just kind of cycle through the rooms like that i don't know if this is going to work but i think it sounds promising i guess only time can tell all right just give us a moment here gonna carve out these rooms real quick get them nice and smooth maybe put some furniture in there or something hopefully the whole thing doesn't take too long i don't think it will Year six. Yeah, yeah, it did take a little bit. A little bit of doing right there. But we're done. We haven't quite reached the one year mark yet. Almost there. Anywho, yes, we're done now. The four rooms. We have the tavern on the west, temple to the north, library to the east, and barracks to the south. All very well appointed, with gold bars on the floors, and some very nice furniture as well. I suppose we'll start off with a temple, where you can see the gold plating on the floor as I had mentioned, as well as this strip of bloodthorn wood. Figured that'd be a nice touch. Also in this room there are eight golden statues, each one depicts a dwarven god. And on top of that there are also six pedestals, three of which have artifacts on them now. Another nice little touch. Yeah, I can't believe we've reached the sixth year and still haven't had a temple, that is bad. That's bad of me. But I'm hoping to get our worship in and uh, maybe the dwarves can just you know, forgive me, <laughs> hoping. Before I go assigning any of the other rooms as locations, I'm just gonna keep this temple active, just to make sure everyone gets their worship in before being distracted by the tavern, say. The tavern, which is right over here. You can see there's two statues in here, as well as some tables and chairs, of course. A couple of drink piles, which aren't full quite yet, but I'm not too worried about that. And we have some chests too, just to store instruments, when we have them, that is. We don't have anything yet. Down here in the south you can see the barracks, with plenty of armor stands and weapon racks. Gold on the floor as well, of course. Not much else to say really. And then over here to the east you can see our library. In it you can see all of our bookcases, I think there's 42 in here. Plenty of storage. As well as a bunch of tables, chairs, a whole bunch of chests in which to store writing materials, choirs and stuff. And there are a couple of pedestals in here as well, which are currently holding artifacts. A nice little touch I thought. Now, speaking of writing materials, in this past year, we were able to get quite a few of them. Having a look at our stocks, you can see we have 177 pigtail sheets right now. Each can be used to make a choir that a scholar can use to write a book. I think that should be enough for now. Really hoping. <laughs> and we will get to that in just a little bit. I still want to let these guys up here do a bit more worshipping first, just to make sure everybody gets their fill. 
Over here in the stairwell, you can see Odom, a farmer, throwing a tantrum. Hoping nothing comes of this. Better watch yourself, farmer. Most of the dwarves have been pretty chill this past year, but Odom here has been throwing tantrums lately. And it's hard to say the exact reason. I think it might have something to do with the fact that she has not been able to be close to her family in a while. She has a very large family, and none of them live here in the fortress. So I can see where she's coming from, at least to some degree. But come on, sister. Pull it together. Not much you can do at this point. In other news, you can see over here in our farm plot room, we have crammed all the pigs and piglets in here. Just to kind of keep them out of the way, they were clogging up the tunnels before. Which, you know, it's a bit of a mess. So, I figured, eh, what the hell. Also, as you can see, we do have plenty of them now, so we've been butchering them fairly consistently. The males, anyways, trying to preserve the females just so we can keep that swine production up. But yeah, it's going well. Their skins frequently come back to life after we're done butchering them, but they have not been a problem yet at all. They're always dealt with very quickly. Although sometimes that leads to the mangling of the skin. And you can't tan it afterwards, which is a pain, but whatever. Gonna have to make do, I suppose. Checking back in on our temple. How you dwarves doing? Get your fill of worship yet? Hmm, we can let him go a second longer. And while we do, we can take another look up here to the surface. The fetid, nasty surface where there's an ever-increasing number of zombies roaming about. A whole bunch of them. So far we've had two caravans arrive which have been absolutely destroyed, and there's also been a couple of migrant waves as well. Yes, we're still getting migrant waves. Now I've been expelling them as they arrive, just to get them out of here, because I don't want any more dwarves, but sometimes those migrants see the zombies here and they start losing their minds, and just run around in a panic and eventually die like these poor bastards right here. Yeah, it's a shame. I guess we could have let them in, but it's kind of a dicey proposition. I have unlocked this hatch right here a couple of times, but whenever I do, all the zombies in the area come running straight for it, and so it's really not something I'm willing to risk. Yeah, I really don't like leaving those dwarves to fend for themselves, but well, I'm not going to risk our dwarves. That'd be foolish. Oh, and speaking of our dwarves, we've had a few more babies born in the fortress, and our population is now up to 48. Figured I'd throw that out there. Pretty exciting, really. And speaking of exciting, it looks like we have another artifact here made by Rakust, our expedition leader. Gotta have a look at that. Rakust Geshudarith, the expedition leader, has created Sedilzokun Akilnagraf, a nice table. She claims it as a family heirloom. Its name translates to Angel Siege, the point of weather, and it's worth 84,000. A decent moat, not bad. Oh well, wow. that's got a lot going on. Well, let's get to it. This is a nice table. All craft worship is of the highest quality. It is decorated with pig bone and encircled with bands of nether cap. This object menaces with spikes of nice and emerald. On the item is an image of Rakust bodice splatters the dwarf in nice. Not an image of our expedition leader. This Rakust is the outpost liaison of our civilization. On the item is an image of braved palms, the rasp of emancipating the native gold caller in nice. The horn of Skullhover. Very nice. On the item is an image of Oostooth Bolt Splattered the Dwarf and Dwarves in Pigtail. Very cool, that is the first king of the Glad Lash, our civilization. On the item is an image of a forgotten beast in pig leather, as well as a second image of the Horn of Skull Horror. And to finish off, we have one more image of a forgotten beast in pig bone. Very cool, extremely busy. We definitely have to do something with this. And I think I'll put it in the temple. Why the hell not? Just as a sign of respect to our gods who I'm, I guess, about to disrespect because I'm turning off the temple. That's enough worship for you bastards. And now we're going to turn on the library. It is time to start writing some books, my dwarves. Start researching. Let's do this. Very interested to see how this goes. I actually did make all the dwarves in the fortress as scholars as well. Which, yeah, I know isn't a great idea. Relax, okay? We got plenty of food and drinks right now. And really, I just want to see how this goes. Okay, well right now it looks like the scholars that are in the library are all discussing foraging behavior. Very neat, so they're all just gathered around discussing how animals forage, I believe. Except for Led down here, who is pondering reproductive behavior. Just by themselves. Oh, you dirty birdie. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I suppose I'll just leave it to it for a while. We do have a bunch of choirs right now, and so if anybody feels like writing, they're free to do it. Hoping it doesn't take too long for it to happen. Although sometimes it does. That's okay. We can be patient here. No worries. 
All right, time is still ticking forward here. At this point, it's been almost a year since we opened the library, but we've run into a little bit of a problem, a problem that I think many of the dwarves are facing. Yeah, if you look right here, we see Libash, who's not having a very good time at all. And I believe it mostly stems from her not being able to socialize with the other dwarves. And on top of that, it also looks like she gets very anxious from discussing um, various educational pursuits. Yeah, I mean, just having a look in her mind here, she's very anxious after discussing many of the things that the other dwarves are discussing. It all makes her feel anxious. Foraging behavior, bandages, reproductive behavior. Yeah, you know, I guess some dwarves really aren't cut out for being scholars. Unfortunately, we haven't had any books written quite yet, but as I said before, it sometimes does take quite a long time. That being said, I think I'm going to take the scholars off duty for now, and instead I'm going to open up our tavern. I think they could use a little rest, don't you? Yeah, let's do that. There we go, I just set it up, and so I'm hoping the scholars make their way in here soon. They should, anyways. I did turn off the library and the temple, and so they don't really have much of a choice, I don't think. They certainly are taking their time. Alright, I guess I'm just going to get rid of the library entirely, for now. You guys really should relax a bit, I think. You deserve it. Okay, it's taking a bit too long. Just going to unassign them all as scholars. Kind of a crappy system, but mm, got to do what you got to do, I suppose. Okay, and there we go. We're finally getting some citizens in the Beer Skull, the name of our tavern. Welcome, welcome, enjoy yourselves, dwarves. I was also sure to cancel a lot of the labors upstairs, and I locked up the farm room as well. Again, we do have plenty of food and drinks, so I'm not too concerned about that. Now, we shall just take it easy for a bit and try to get that socialization in. Very important. Just because I was a bit concerned about her, I made Libash our tavern keep, but uh, she hasn't really gotten to work quite yet. You can see her here running around, just freaking out, I guess. Uh, uh, I'm kind of hoping she pulls it together at some point, but once again, time will tell. On top of that, we actually have a second Libash in the fortress who's not doing so hot. And so I made her a tavern keep as well. Hmm, we'll see if that works. I've had success with it in the past, but I guess you never know. Both Libashes are pretty far gone at this point. Ah, and speaking of far gone, actually, I hadn't mentioned it, but we had a dwarf a while back who had a strange mood, and they couldn't get all the materials they wanted. I have a feeling they needed silk, and we had no way to get it whatsoever. There was a little bit up on the surface with those destroyed caravans, but there's no way we could safely get out there at all. And I would think there'd be some down in the caverns, but I didn't see any at all. And on top of that, we have that forgotten beast problem. It, we just kind of walled the guy in. He went berserk and turned into a zombie who's now caught in a cage. Yeah, a real shame that. But a bigger shame still is that that was the father of the fortress baby. Oh, a uh, little bit of a problem here. It looks like the ghost of that zombie just came back and knocked this dwarf's leg off. Uh, not super awesome. Gonna get a slab engraved ASAP. Yeah, this baby. At this point, it's just her and her older sister here in the fortress. Her sister who was also born in Skull Horror. Pretty interesting. Yeah, there are a couple of good kids. Um, I think I'm gonna give them nicknames, actually. Just so we can keep an eye on them. Well, Zulban, the baby. I think we'll call you that baby, which seems odd, I'm sure. But if you think about it, the dwarves in the fortress are probably concerned about that baby who's crawling around all over the place with no parents. And so I imagine a name like that would stick after a while. And for your sister Kib over here in the farm plot area with the pigs, well, I think we have to go with just pig, which is, <laughs> that's a horrible name for a little girl. But I don't know, you get a reputation hanging around in the pig pen. She also has an upturned nose. Just an unfortunate thing, I guess. Sorry, pig. Some nicknames just stick. And you know, while we're at it, giving nicknames to people, Libash, one of our starting five dwarves and tavern keep, gotta give you a nickname. And I think we'll go with... Twitch. Just because she's so terribly nervous and anxious. Yeah, that'll do. And last but not least, I'm gonna give a nickname to Rackust, our expedition leader. I just happen to think of a fantastic one. Rackust, from now on, your nickname will be... Zombie because I was pretty sure she was a goner, but then she came right back like it was nothing. And on top of that fact, she's still kind of mean as hell. <laughs> Rackust, I like you. Keep on keeping on, you bastard. Yeah, starting to be a pretty big fan of this fortress. All these dwarves, actually. Skull Horror, the greatest fortress in the south. The only fortress, but still the greatest. And technically the worst, but no matter. Year 8. And we're starting off this year with some fairly bad news. 
Here in this doorway we can see Twitch, throwing yet another tantrum. It's kind of been her thing this entire past year. And you may notice too that she's laying on the ground and covered with her own blood. That's because she foolishly picked a fight with Clovey, a surly old lady dwarf who is a poet and our broker. And unfortunately it does not look like things are working out very well for Twitch at all. Let's see how this plays out. Alright, we're continuing here. It doesn't look like they're fighting anymore. Yeah, poor Twitch is just laying on the ground now, freaking out, still tantruming. You gotta feel bad for her, really. And even more bad news for Twitch. This time she's going to have to be punished. We've kind of been letting her get away with an awful lot. But no more. Time to pay the price, Twitch. Yeah, there she goes. Sheriff Bomrek is hauling her off to the prison. Yeah, it's a shame it has to come to that. But we can't have any fighting in the fortress. Just gotta hope now you don't end up like Odom over here. A sad fate indeed. But unfortunately, at this point, it's extremely likely. Good luck, Twitch. Now then, back to Fortress news. The past year went pretty smoothly. When we last left off, a lot of the dwarves were hanging out in the tavern, just kind of relaxing for the most part. But after a while, it seemed they had their fill, kind of. And so we just kind of gradually got back to work. I would like to put them on as scholars again, but there really is a lot of stuff we got to do around here. Still, even. If you have a look at our work orders here, we currently have slated the production of 50 copper shields, greaves, and high boots. And we've already made 50 helmets, breastplates, and gauntlets. Which is more than enough to armor all of our dwarves. And yes, I know, it's just copper. But this past year we did a ton of digging, and we found nothing better at all. So it looks like we're gonna have to make do. At least it was tetrahedrite though, which means we get silver as well. And so that means we can get some nice blunt weapons. Hammers, probably. It won't be bad. Another thing we did with the copper in this past year is we made a bunch of animal traps, a whole lot of them, 20. Because there are some nasty vermin that have been popping up all over the place, ever since we breached into that lower cavern level, and I think it's time we start dealing with them. I believe they've been causing our food to spoil, and we have to do something about that. And so we'll get some of these traps set up down here. I notice they like to pop up near our butcher's workshops when we're trying to slaughter pigs. Here we are. And you know what, I'm going to put down some more as well. A whole bunch. And once they are all down, we're going to want to bait them with meat from these pigs here that we're just now slaughtering. Okay, there we are. Traps are down and being baited as we speak. Now to see if we actually catch anything. I'm sure we'll get something. I'm telling you, these gross bastards are all over the place. Alright, looks like all the traps are baited. Shouldn't be much longer now. You know, I can see one of the things right now in this butcher shop over here damn thing keeps popping up. Doesn't appear to be going towards the trap though. Come on you damn thing. Ooh, oh damn it. It looks like the meat has begun to rot. Not great at all. Yeah, go ahead, dump it all away dwarves. Well, I don't know, I thought this would work no problem. Put some meat in some traps and you start catching yourself some vermin. But no, it doesn't look like we caught a single thing. I even put a bunch of those damn things down on our smelter layer and nothing. Not a damn thing, just a bunch of stink clouds. Stupid. Oh, actually incorrect. Looky here. It looks like somebody caught a two-legged rhino lizard. Fascinating. Well, I believe we can tame that, and I don't think anybody's going to want it as a pet, really. But it's still neat. Might just throw it somewhere for the hell of it. What I was trying to catch are these things here. Creepy crawlers, is what they're called. And they're pretty gross. We had a ton of them around the fortress, and they're not always visible, so they could be anywhere. I was sure I would catch one eventually. They're everywhere, really. But... I don't know. Couldn't get our hands on any. If anybody out there has any tips, just let me know. I thought this was going to be so cool so I get to show you these nasty creatures here. By the way, the description reads, A tiny underground creature made of a mass of appendages resembling human fingers. It creeps across the ground like a starfish and eats with a mouth on the bottom of its body. They're evil creatures and not very valuable as pets, but I guess you could butcher them. I wanted to see what I could do with them, but again, uh, I'm not too sure how to do that really. If anybody out there has any tips, please let me know because I still would like to catch these things. Back up to the rhino lizard, just in case you were interested. Its description reads, A tiny reptile running on two legs. It has a horn on the end of its nose. It's cute. I like it. Although it is still a vermin, and I'm glad we caught it. At great expense. <laughs> so stupid. Alright, well just realizing how close to the end of the episode we are, and so I'm going to cut off real quick. Skull Horror is looking great. And we have an armorsmith here who is just about to make an artifact, which I'm very excited about. Gonna save that till next episode though. Sorry. 
Anyways, you bearded bastards, thank you so much for watching. I truly do hope you enjoyed yourselves. And I certainly hope you'll join me next time here in Nicole Kazoff, I Shalal de Safkashad Rosh. Skull Horror, the frigid south nightmare fortress of death. And until then, you bearded bastards. Oh.